Well, hello. Welcome to More to Digital, everyone. I'm your host, Mary Therese Griffin in Atlanta. Today, we have Philip Mandel on the program. Yes, that Philip Mandel from Mandel Marketing. So excited you joined us today, Phil. How's it going? Great. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. I appreciate you saying yes. And, and right off the bat, we like to tell folks that you know we, we give you uh, some questions just to start off to fill out. So I want to read one of your answers because I, I think I loved it. It was just brilliant. Love your, your, uh, your wording too. And we like to talk about the biggest change that you see coming in digital marketing. And you said that you talked about the privacy concerns that continue to make digital marketing more accountable and less of a wild west Hallelujah. Thank you, baby Jesus. You hit it right there. Let's talk about that. Because, you know, with the, the absence of cookies and you, you can't pinpoint that audience, how are we going to do that? How is that going to happen? And how are we going to find that appropriate audience? Yeah, it's an interesting question. And you actually have two sides of the coin here. On the one hand, um, we're talking about how us as marketers, how we're going to reach our target audience. And on the other hand, mm -hmm. we uh, think about, at least I think about a lot, the audience themselves, I as a consumer, as a consumer of media and as a person, how I want my own privacy uh, protected. So I think there is a, uh, a give and take that we need to consider. Um, we were able to market to audiences for years and years and years before cookies, before uh, digital media made it easier and more insightful. So we may have to go back to some of the old school tactics of how to reach people through finding out uh, what where they are and, and what media they're using rather than just building specific demographic or behavioral uh, audiences. Some of that's still going to exist, of course, but I think the give and take of what we're willing to give up as people and what we're willing to uh, by as marketers has to be struck in a place where we're respectful of audience as well as still giving them advertising that they're going to want. Uh, I get advertising on Instagram that's very, very targeted. And sometimes it's based off of some random conversation that I'll be having with a friend uh, about something and then I'll get an ad for it. And that feels very creepy. And of course I know how it's working, but when somebody mm -hmm. who's not in the business gets it, it can feel very creepy. However, I also get uh, ads on Instagram that are really targeted to something that I am interested in and I'm happy to get the ad because I wind up getting the product. So I'm not against getting these kinds of targeting. I just want to make sure that we're respectful to our audience, especially as an advertiser. Uh, I think that if we make our audience, our potential consumer feel creeped out that we found them because they had a conversation about the product, uh, that may actually wind up having a negative effect on them. So sure. I've been in advertising and digital for 20 years, and I've seen it progress since the very beginning. Well, maybe not exactly the beginning, but since the early 2000s. And I think we hit a, a wave where it got very intrusive, and now we're coming to a point where we have to be smarter. And that's our job. You know, that's as professionals, we need to figure out a way to do it better. Well, and that's my next question for you, because when a, when a business, a potential client is looking to tell their story, grow their brand, you know, uh, insert whatever uh, important thing you want there. It's it's a good idea for them to partner with someone like you who has the background, even if they have an internal media or marketing department. Why is that? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, we've been doing it for a long time, and we're agnostic as to what platforms our clients work on. We obviously have our preferred platforms that we think are useful and and are effective, but we meet our clients where they're at. So if we're working with a company who doesn't have a marketing department and we're acting as their agency and their marketing department, we can run it from soup to nuts, from product development through, uh, through the sale. But when we're working with a marketing department, uh, we take what they have, their uh, learnings, their research, and we help them get better. And we use our years and years of knowledge in the industry to help them get strategy uh, that we've learned over the years and, and help them just get better at it. So what we like to do is uh, provide very high level expert advice and strategy that some companies may not feel they have access to because they don't have million or $2 million budgets to you know, work with some of the huge agencies in the world. 
we can still provide them that level of expertise through our company. Oh, and you know, that is, that's going to be a whole nother conversation about budgets and being able to do this because you, you don't have to have millions and millions of dollars, but Phil, I, I want to ask this of you because I love your backstory. I love how you got into this. Do you mind sharing with our audience? Because this just backs up the sage advice that you're offering here. Uh, you, you saw a need and you answered the call when you decided to get into this crazy world of marketing. How did that happen? Well, yeah. So uh, I started the company a couple of years ago with my brother. We've both been in the agency world for many years and on the client side and in the publisher side. And we've been doing it for a long time. And we decided that uh, we felt that high level strategy and expertise thinking was lacking. And so what we wanted to bring was really good ideas. And so I am a professional writer and I have an MFA in creative writing and my brother has an MBA in business. And so what we wanted to do was bring really creative and strategic ideas to the marketing world for companies, our own company, for our partner companies, our client companies, and say to them, you can do great work and you don't have to uh, have a you know huge AOR budget or work with some hotshot firm on Madison Avenue. Uh, we can help you get there. And we can also help teach our clients how to do it themselves. So we want to empower them to be able to take their ideas and turn them into great marketing plans and great copy and tell good stories on their website and in their marketing materials. And that, my friend, is the ball game. I would love to have you come back and let's talk about content and, and branding and everything that goes with it. I think you're brilliant and I really appreciate you being with us Thank on More to Digital. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm glad to be here come back anytime. And we have so much great advice for the rest of you out there. You can connect with Phil. We can connect you with any of the other great interviews we have on our other platforms because it's all for you. It's great ideas in storytelling and media and marketing right here on More to Digital. You find us at dailyadbrief.com. I'm Mary Trace in Atlanta. We'll see you next time.